to play Good afternoon, welcome back to the European Open from the IPA here in Chesford Grange It's David Heim again commentating on the last 64 in the Open match I'm joined by an amateur player Mr Gustafsson Yeah, that's right Trust you to have the most awkward surname on the IPA Joined a little bit late, presume that Jack has broken off and made a ball, but missed his first one unexpectedly. How's your day gone today? Are you just waiting for your amateur game? Yeah, just waiting for the amateur game. Mine starts at 4 30. You on at four thirty? Yeah, I'm at four thirty against uh, Alex Rambert. You played him before? No, no, no. First time on the uh, on the tour this this year. So is this your first event that you played the yeah. other three as well? No, no, no. This is my first event. I'm gonna uh, gonna go to Brighton later on in the year. Do you know anything about these two players? You obviously know Jack, I'm sure, world champion. Yeah, I know Jack. Um, don't know, don't know actually know anything at all about uh, Scott. Well, he's been around for a long time, sporting the eight ball tattoo on his neck as well. Jack, the 2015 world champion. I think he won everything in 2015. But I was lucky enough just to uh, not interview, but certainly commentate with him in the last match. Very interesting to talk to. His shot selection, you can learn so much from. 
does his own coaching if you're interested. Uh, well, maybe something I need to look at in the future. Maybe we get a discount if we both sign up. <laughs> Prices are, oh, I believe, because they're not quite on screen yet. Jack Wheeling goes in a heavy favour at 11 to 4 on. Scott Ross, before he cleans up here, if he does, it's 2 to 1. Now, there's no doubt that Jack's favourite is a professional ex world champion. But to call Scott an amateur is, well, being a bit cruel, if anything, he's certainly more than capable. Yeah, I've I've heard exactly the same over the last couple of days. Apparently, his uh, his game's really come on. How have you found Warwick then? Enjoyed the hotel? Yeah, really, really, really good hotel. Rooms are really nice. Uh, food's good. Been swimming? No, 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 not been swimming. Nor have I. Not enough room in the pool. <laughs> Me and James Hanley went in and they kicked us straight out. <laughs> so if he's on this, he's got to screw straight back up the table. Straight up the left-hand side rail. Great shot. Doesn't want to be hampered by the yellow. I think he's OK. He's going to have to play this with a little bit of screw, just to hold. Then he can play the block either the right middle or the right bottom. I think he's going to play this into the right bottom. Just drop it in. A lot easier if you can get your hand on the table though, aren't they? Touch your left hand side. Great shot. Perfect. You, um, it's, it's great commentating, Matt, because you get a feeling for the players around the table. And uh, already, this is the first time I've commented on, commentated on Scott. He's very intense around the table, very concentrated. Similar to Jack in that way. You get a few more expressions out of him, Jack, though. What are you like? What's your style of play? And how are you emotionally? Um, very safe a lot of the time. Uh, not really a heavy potter. Uh, I like to tuck people up more than more than anything. Are you a boring fudger? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, we don't like that on commentary. <laughs> Have you played both sets of rules? Yeah, I've played both sets of rules. Um, don't really get along particularly well with the with the world rules. Good break. Not the best of whites, but has made a ball. Sorry about the interference. Too many mobile phones. Ideally, I think he'd prefer yellows here. So drop the one in the left middle, maybe. Yep, probably dead weight, this. Oh, he's played it hard. I'm surprised by that. Well, he's had a result, though. He has had a result. He's still got one into, into the middle. Been, I mean, he could have ended up with a very little shot there. Maybe maybe he was that thin he couldn't hold. He has one into the middle, or he has the one down the bottom rail. Lovely shot. Scott's been playing on the IPA for quite a while. 
He was, um, I think he was a runner-up in one of the amateur tournaments last year or the year before, 2014. I, I'm pretty sure he's from north of the border. But I'm just finding out because I don't want to quote wrong. Yes, he is. They've got some good players up there. Liam Dunst, Ross Fernie. Just to mention a couple. So after a little, little bit of run, you to take full advantage when you're playing Jackie. And you've won the first one, you keep going to keep him off the table. And he's having the run. The black's gone nice. And a very good opportunity here. Yeah, well, certainly I'll be looking to put these away, you feel. Left corner would be better to get out of the way if he's on it. Body language suggests otherwise. Yeah, he's just over screwed. That's probably because the stream table does tend to play a little bit faster than the outside tables. Just making things a little bit tricky. Just he's got a couple of options here. He can try and play the one that he's closest to with a bit of right hand side to hold the white, or he can play the one bottom left um, and just come back up the table, which looks like a natural angle. Very good shot. Great shot. I think he's got the perfect angle just to come two cushions around the back of the L now. But no, he's playing the other one. Nicely does it. Slightly the wrong side, but can't see the black causing any problems. Just drop this in. And the black should just be a formality. Well, 2 0 and all is quiet on the jet wheel in front. Are we going to see a change in odds? Did anybody back Scott Ross at 2 to 1 at the start of the match? It's fine. All we say. How's your break, Matt? Break's working actually very well this weekend. Um, I've had out of the, uh, the 16 games that I've played, three dry breaks. So, <laughs> doing very well. Really good. Well, if you needed any tips, this is the man to watch. You're going to get a, a, the best view in the house. I have um, how to break. Jack giving me the evil eye. I think I need to be a bit quiet. The power in that break is incredible. It's just the sheer noise that it makes. So important the break, isn't it? You see many matches won. There have been lots of break dishes over the last few days. It's a great standard, isn't it? Excellent standard. So it's the first time you've been to any IEPA event? Yeah, first time. I've watched a lot of it. Um, oh. First time that I've, I've actually turned up and come to an event. You've had to listen to me and Dan Rush more than once, then. Yeah, I've, I've had to listen to you. One of my uh, one of my friends, Maddie Challen, he won the uh, won the last amateur. Oh yeah, what a player! Unfortunately, he's uh, he's just been knocked out of the open. Do try and be nice to everybody, especially since, as a pool player, I understand the pressure that these players are under because it's a lot different compared to playing on the outside table than when you get on the stream. For a lot of people, I mean, to, for the pros and the regular amateurs, to these two playing now, it makes no difference whatsoever. I think for the amateurs that it's the first time on the stream table, I, th I think they do find the pressure, and it does build up. Definitely, if you're inexperienced. 
very impressed by Matty Challoner, your friend though. Ben Rowland, another another lad that's from Oxford. He's a very, very, very good player. Run a big comp recently, didn't he? Yeah, he's uh, just won the uh, the Golden Eight Ball. Yeah. Oh, I think he's totaled. That's unlucky. Maybe have to see a, a sniff of <laughs> sniff of the that. other end. I mean, he, he probably will if he can see this red open it up because he's got a little bit of insurance with the yellow next to the black, but he hasn't. After sitting with Jack in the last game, well, good shot. After sitting with Jack in the last game, do you find that he takes the uh, the cautious option? And who are we to argue? I don't think he wanted that in. More balls off the table, the more advantage to the opposition. He must feel like his hand's been forced here now. You're going to see an attacking shot, I think. Because of the when he played out the snook of the red dropping in, he's going to force this in off the black and try and break out the red at the top of the table. Oh, he's got the line. Oh, my days. And you're running well. Couldn't have hit that any better. And I think we're going to see the, the most hated shot on a pool table, a hit and hope. But I'm struggling to see where he's going to flute this. If he hits it full ball, it might go in the left middle off the yellow. But you, you're talking a thousand to one. And he's fouled. It's very unfortunate. That's even worse because if he doesn't foul, Scott's still got a bit of an issue. All right, he was probably going to get snookered, but at least it gives Jack another chance to fluke it. Now Scott's going to use his second shot to get the problem yellow out. Just like that. It's a good shot. through the sponsor can I say I haven't mentioned it yet but the table looks fantastic you like it? Yeah, the team that came in on, on Thursday night did a really good job with wrapping the table Players' body language, and he's just beaming into he's got full of confidence. Like, yes, I know they weren't difficult, but he'll be over moon with his start. To be fair to Jack, he's not really had a chance, and the one chance he did have just went terribly wrong. I feel when Jack gets his hand onto the table, he will, he will start firing. It's whatever he gets the time. That's the problem. These are short races. First to sevens in the last 64. And also, it has to be said, Jack's only played one match, whereas Scott's probably played four to get to this stage. So he's had his, he's had plenty of time to get his eye in. Absolutely. And now it's 3 0. Praying for a ball here, and he's got one. I think if, I mean, if it goes 4 0, there's only one winner, really. First to seven. Yeah. Just to reassure everybody, it is 3 0, not 2 0. We're 
will be updated. for the taking now. <laughs> One more good shot. Which one are you taking here? It's obviously one of them up into the top, top of the table. I'm taking the one on the right, me. And I'm popping the one in the middle. Mm. Myself, I'll be looking at a Probably thin more. snip into middle. Thin snip, yeah. Thin snip into middle. That's what he's gone mm. for. We've, we've signed. Played that perfectly. As long as this yellow passes into the right middle, which I presume it does, and he just wants to land slightly low. Oh, he's taking it now, is he? Nope. Right. He doesn't know which one he's going for. I feel like we're going for the, uh, the bottom right hand. Back, leaving himself the one down down the rail. I never like leaving the ones down the rail to last, especially when you've got a screw back. It just makes the putt a little bit harder. I suppose it is away from the cushion. Wants to be straight. Wants to be, and that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. It's a nice clean queuing, and from what we've seen in the first three, this won't be a problem. Oh, you see. Commentators again. He just adds that pressure, and the, the, the corner pockets have been running just a little bit tight. Um, let's hope that's not a turning point in the match because Jack needed something to get back into this game. And if Scott doesn't win this frame, it might cost him later on in the match. At this sort of standard, then mistakes can cost. I think he'll go game here, Mark. I think he has to. Well, there's your answer. <coughs> Those of you out there who are maybe watching and have either played an IPA event or have never played one before, <laughs> the last one is, I think it's the 12th of October, possibly the 4th. 14th maybe the weekend around there in the Hilton Brighton and there are still a few places available if you're interested just contact the IPA through Facebook or through the website one of the best hotels on the tour right on the beachfront as well so bring the kids Great shot. Great shot that is. So, soft screw this into bottom right and hold for the two reds into the middle right pocket. Just plain bolt. Perfect. This is good. See how this could hurt him in the context of the match? This has got to hurt. Oh, oh. Has he, hasn't he? He's 
it's just lost the, the white ball slightly. I don't think he's on this. I think he has to swerve. It must be tight if he's gone around the other side. the pot's the question has gone towards whether it's a total snooker because if it is then he can roll off the top cushion behind it and snooker Scott if it isn't it makes it a lot more difficult I think Mal Harley's going to be called in to do a little bit of work Scott McMillan Mal must be having a brew Referee says, Oh, it's tight. He's putting his second ball out. This is a big decision in the context of this match. 4 0 and 3 1 is massive. Total snooker has been called. Scott Ross. Scott Ross is disagreeing. This is a little bit out of the ordinary, this. We've had a referee's decision. That should be final. I don't know if a player has the right to call a senior referee in, but... Scott's convinced that he can see an edge. Total has been called. So yeah, the, referee's decision, the referee's decision is final. Just get on with it. A very soft shot here. Good to see Scott just hanging around a little bit longer. I think he's played this perfectly. No, no, that didn't hit. Yeah, and he's had enough. Just had a little bit of eye contact with Jack there. He's not happy, I think. A little bit behaviour there. Once the decision's been made, he should just be swallowing and disagreeing. Jack won't like that at all. about to see what sort of champions are made of here. You know, his back is completely against the wall now. He's 4-0. There's been a little bit of animosity on the table. Scott Ross now 1-5. Jack Whelan 7-2. Absolutely crunched them. The noise on certain players' breaks is astonishing, but he's shaking his head because he wants an easy opener than what he's got, and he kind of deserves one. the bow out. No, I think this is a safety. Yep. interesting to see how players will react after something like that has happened around the table I mean the referee's been called is it a total snooker yes it is, that should be the end of it 
what's the final decision? To be fair to Jack, he, uh, you know, he, he offered to get another referee. Scott and dropped his shoulder into that. A little unfortunate. Trying to open the rest of the, the colours. Safety shot from Scott here. On and off the cushion. Touching ball on both, I think. Jack will need to get some fluency back into this match. Because he is a fluent attacking player by nature. You won't want to be bogged down in this when you're 4 0 down. Then we have already seen quite a few uh, good players already go out. Mark Fansworth. It's beaten by Steve Wall this morning. Yeah, so I believe. Great result. You watched any other matches? Um, uh, Clint Iamson, um, I saw part of that match earlier. Playing very fluently this morning. Got through quite comfortably, didn't he? Very comfortably. Okay, Jack looking to attack here. Red into the right middle, possibly. I, I would be playing this with screw. Off the first red into the second, just like that. Great shot. You can't ask for much more than that. I don't think the black passes into the top left. Is a great shot. That is exactly how we played it. Jack knows how important this frame is. At 5 0, he's not favourite against anybody. A must win frame. When the pressure's on, underdone that a little bit. Gonna have to play this with Tracer right hand side. Now then, does the black go? Or maybe cushion yellow pocket? He thinks it does, which means it probably does. Cushion, yellow, and pocket. 4 1. Well done, Jack Whelan. 4 1. Match is back on. Jack Whelan keeps giving me the eye. Maybe I'm too loud. Maybe he thinks I'm saying horrible things about him.
Never would I. Did you listen to before? You were talking about shot choices and Jack's shot choices is a little bit different to a lot of other players. He sees the game differently. Yeah, it's great to listen to. Everyone, everyone has their own view. And a dry bait from Scott. Just what the doctor ordered this. Ah, he wasn't giving me the eye. The scoreboard is wrong. Matt George now. Everything's changed. Jack's confident the balls are in the open. If it was me having a bet through Cavill, 9-4 to four looks quite good in a race to 7. By no means is he favourite, but he's more than capable, because this, this is looking very much like 4-2. Get it on before the bookies change it. Can he pot this to the middle? If not, he may have to play it off the reds. If not, he may have to play it to the top pocket. Or it might be an, even a map reroute. Thirteen to eight, someone was listening. I'm sure they'll freeze though because he's out of position. you fancied um, Jack for the whole competition he was at sixes before this match he's That's played it off the reds the great the shot. I think he's a little bit well how's he going to play this just top it through this is going to go close oh I doubt there's, there's, there's nobody better at playing shots like that. That was precision at its best. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant finish. Top quality pool, that. Brilliant. Four two jack to break game on. Thirteen to eight. Anybody fancy it? Eleven to eight now. The listening. I'm going to call it. I'm going to be brave. Fancy a breaking dish off this one. The difference between players, amateurs and professionals. It, he's not seen any weakness, but the run has just changed a little bit. unlucky it's kicked into the middle just when you you felt he was getting back into it let's give Scott a great opportunity to take the 5-2 yeah and then reds are winking aren't they or oh, yellows I mean what would you take you take reds or yellows I'd, I'd take reds myself yeah possibly look at moving the one on the bottom cushion first use your free shot let's see how Scott sees it take either from here, none the wiser I think the plan was to take yellows I think he might be taking reds now they're, all, they're both there but each colour has one difficult positional shot just to land right on it Thank you. 
a chat. Big use of left hand side just to hold the cue ball uh, from running into the middle of the table. He'll probably just bob this one onto the bottom right and leave himself just a plain ball shot, the one along the bottom rail. That way, guaranteeing himself a, a nice easy pot. The one yeah, of three reds into the middle. He's guaranteed on uh, either of the outside balls. He could take the one long up into the top right, or he could take the one into the middle. I, I think he'll probably take the one into the middle if he's on it and go up the table. It's going to have to be the plant or the long yellow. This is looking like 5 2 though. One into the middle, okay. up to the top of the table. Yep, he's fine there. I'll just pop this in, plain ball. Only lack of concentration can stop him putting these. He missed one similar to this in the last frame. The one before, sorry, and, but it was a lot more difficult than this. Bread and butter part this. And you can see how intense he is around the table, can't you? Very intense. 5 2. I don't see him missing that. No, he'll be delighted at 5 2. And to be fair to Jack, he's not particularly played that well. He's just been very, very unlucky. Some days all you need is a rub of the green. Unfortunately, it's not been going Jack's way today. Scott praying for a ball off the break here. And Jack praying for no ball off the break. Can you hear he's made a ball and they've all opened up? Not gone too nicely. You've watched now uh, four breaks each. Can you tell the difference in the breaks? Have you noticed? That Jack's is that he sounds different the way he hits it and the way he times the break. Scott hasn't got a bad break by any means, but certain players seem to have a a knack of timing the break and keeping so much power into the pack virtually every time. Yep. Also, Jack, uh, where, the, where he leaves the white ball, he normally leaves the white ball on where the blue spot would be. Yep, that's where it got kicked from into the middle pocket in the last frame which was very unusual to it to get cut into the middle pocket. Possibly the one of the best breaks on the tour, I would say, Jack. Just trying to think who else. Ben Davies has got one of the biggest breaks I've ever seen in my life. So it's going to be a little bit of a tactical battle. It's an open table. As a in black balls after the break, even if you pop balls, pop one or more balls, the table's still open. And this seems to be the general way to play. If this is the case, to keep things tight and make your opposition push the boat out, in the hope that he'll open the table for you and make the clearance for your balls a lot easier. 
But I'm pretty sure Scott Ross is wise to the black balls. Is he definitely going to play Brighton? Definitely going to play Brighton. Looking forward to some of the new events next year. Are you going to sign up? I'm definitely signing up. Um, uh, I'm going to pay my deposit um, either t- later on today or tomorrow. Um, make sure that I secure my place for, for next year. Good. Um, been a really good experience. Fortunately, I've not had to come far. I've only come from Oxford, so 40, 40 minutes down the road. It's okay. Feel sorry for some of the Scottish lads. Yeah, they've had a long drive to get down here. It'd be even worse for the next one. But it's been an excellent weekend. Um, Got to meet a lot of great people. It's a great atmosphere for these events. It's good to get the views of somebody who's only ever been to one before, because usually when I sit with someone, it's James Honey or one of the pros, or Kev Barton, or one of my friends. And they've they done loads of them before, so to get a view of somebody who's just here for the first time is quite nice, because a lot of people listening have probably never been to one of these events before. Well, if you haven't been to one of the events before, and you fancy fancy your chances, then definitely go on the website, sign up, or, or even come and watch the Brighton event. Yeah, a little holiday in October. I think he's just going to push a ball over a pocket here by the snooker. Those are watching, just asking about uh, latest scores. I will try and get an update. Uh, I know John McAllister won in the last round. Uh, Mark Farns have lost in the last round. Try and find a couple more for you now. So, again, still scrappy in this frame. Sharp, but no run again.
just trying to get you some live scores now. Apparently having a little bit of fun with the tablets. For those of you wanting to know, I believe you can get it on your website. I'm struggling for mobile signal. And that's the only computer I've got. A couple more people asking on the live stream who you're listening to. My, na- my name's Matthew Gustafsson. And Try spelling that. Unfo- uh, unfortunately, Coral uh, have actually spelt my name wrong on the... Uh, on their site. Fancy that. It's only about 14 letters. Yeah. A Swedish surname. Gustafsson. Is that right? That's right. Swedes. Got a couple from Norway. I think it's nice, Matt, as I say, to get somebody who's just come to the first, you know, just come to one event. And that you're so keen because I've played other, and I use the term other very carefully, <laughs> pool events, and the organisation, the running of these comps is by far superior. Nothing is too much for staff when you come up to the top table. We're always keen to help you. There's referees on call whenever you need them. When you've got a problem, you send an email or a message and you get a reply quickly. Yep, been an absolutely excellent weekend. Uh, came down a day early, even though I'm only full, 40 minutes down the road. Too excited. I, I couldn't wait to get down here. Got down at 3 o'clock Thursday afternoon. Had a few beers and uh, got to know some of the lads. Game of poker. Four or five lads that I met on the first night. Poker? When 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 is this happening again? Uh, unfortunately, uh... Unfortunately, <laughs> did you win? No, I didn't. But my uh, my friend that I've come down with, and I'm I'm sharing a room with over the weekend, he actually won won the poker. I need him fighting to this game. I think he was quite lucky. But. Scott in a very strong position here. And he's experienced at these rules. This sort of situation came up in the last match when Jack was commentating. The only real way that Jack's going to win is if he leaves himself an angle on the ball at the top of the table and gets to play the skill shot. But even then, it's tough. That's why he's played up and down. Yeah, it was a legal shot. He's he's basically just saying to Scott Ross, go on then, have a go. And I believe he's gone over. I mean, a lot of it depends on, you know, whether it is a re-rack, if, the, if there's a gap, if he plays it off the last one. I think there is a, I think there is a small gap at the bottom. If there's a gap, then he won't play it. I don't think he'll take the rest. He's too experienced. It's worth noting for the people that are asking, obviously, who you're listening to and stuff. I've been quite lucky that, being a pool fan like most of the people listening, I know a lot of the players before I came down. Just got to know a lot of them. Watched everything, learned the styles and then just talk to the commentary a little bit and if you do come down and you want to have a go on the commentary it's pretty much open to anybody you usually have to have um, somebody experienced with you like myself I've, uh, I've just come over sat yeah, yeah. down and sat down annoying me for the next 30 minutes or so thanks It's exciting times at the IP. The, the, did you watch the presentation last night like Kev did? Yeah, I, yeah, I watched the presentation last night. The, the game looks like it's really going to come forward next year. An IPA official has uh, already put on Facebook, so I presume this is allowed to be public knowledge. That Coral have put over half a million pounds into the IPA. 
their prize money being increased over the next three years. New events such as a Premier League are going to be not only televised but streamed in coal shops. So if you go into coal, and I think coal owned Ladbrokes, I'm not 100% to check, but certainly in coal shops you'll walk in on one of their many TVs, you'll see pool, which I think will make the sport grow an awful lot. Because people in Bucky's are, oh, oh, where's the black going? Oh, that's unlucky. That's very unfortunate. You can't believe it. But you know what? How much bad luck did Jack have at the start of this frame, at the start of this match? Jack with a little smile on his face there. Just evens out a little bit. That is massive. And I feel that Jack's now right back in this. Of course he is. He would have broken this the last break. I called it. I'm going to call it again. Let's see if you're right this time, David. As long as he doesn't go in off. Well, all the bad luck has gone. It's one of my friends that I've come down with, sat next to the uh, the Scott Ross TV screen, Tom Woodbury. He's name dropping. Unfortunately, he's had to share a room with me for the last few days. I think he's looking forward to getting home. Big off you for watching. Very good amateur. At the uh, top left hand side of the table, if we come out to camera one, is uh, Greg Batten. He won an amateur event. I think it was Bradford. I'm going to my neck out. I think it was Bradford he won. Very, very good amateur. Thing that seems to um, separate the amateur amateurs, like myself, from the good amateurs. Just consistency and practice. And how have you been getting on this weekend, David? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, that bad, is it? No, it, I just didn't perform last night. You know, I scraped through a match and then I scraped through another and then I lost two. And that was it. And played awful in the two that I lost. You can't afford to give chances away. Your match play has got to be good. My putting's fine, my position's fine, but my match play is poor. Where I live, there's very little black ball competition. You have to go travelling out, out and away. So I'm, I'm effectively practising against myself. Or, you know, a younger opponent, a lad that I come on tour with, who's a very good player, but all that attack all the time. And you, you're not learning match experience from that because you come on tour and the, some of these lads are all that attack, but not not too many. Paul's more all about taking your chances. Chances available versus chances taken. Got some bad news for you, Matt. You're going to owe me a pound in three balls' time. Pounds are out. The pounds are out. We can't jinx him, can we? Just screw back an inch. Give the ball every chance to drop in. Oh, he's played it with top. Oh, he's on the black. The black will go in the middle. That, that showed that Jack's taken note of the table. I'm just laying by this black because you're very close to us. Jack's now at 5-4, is that? Or is it 5-3? Five, 5-3. Three? Five, three. Five, four. Five, four. Five, four, and I'm a pound richer. Possibly three pound heavier when I go back from this weekend as well. I think Jack was probably. Yeah, we were we were talking before with Jack about the pockets running a little bit tight, and maybe that's a shot. That, well, he was touching the side cushion that he would usually screw, but decided to push through to make sure of the pot. Very nearly went it off. 
Are you going to pick a favourite? We've got no odds on the screen at the minute. Ten to eleven. Ten to eleven on both. And I think Jack goes favourite now. Although they've not opened brilliantly. It's been a good match there. It's not sometimes the best of quality all over, but I said a little bit of everything. Good out there, but I think he played into the red there. I think he wanted to play two cushions and into the red. Yeah, we'll shake the head. And he's not the yellow safe, or maybe that's why he's shaking his head out. So work to be done if he gets these. Decision time. I, th I think he still is going to go game. If he isn't, he'll try and cover the bottom left pocket. Oh, and again, Forrest, he's gone enough. Well, he's looking a bit confused. I'll ask him right afterwards. We had a bounce out in the last match. So until I hear from Jack, it looked like a poor shot, but... I can't comment. Oh. You've seen what I've seen. Well, when I was actually watching the shot, I thought it was a kick myself, and then oh, came maybe. over, came over and watched the replay, and the ball actually bounced back out of the pocket. No kick. That's a straight in the pocket and bounced back out. Maybe a little bit too much power. He didn't hit it very hard. If Scott can't clear these up, then he can certainly take control. I think I feel this is a big visit in the match. Shot, but he's still got two problem reds tied up on the right side of the table. We'll have a deal with these sooner rather than later because when you're going into bowls, you'd like a guaranteed ball to be on. I fancy Scott to get these though, I've got to be honest. Get past that red. If he's got the angle now, he's guaranteed onto the red into the left middle. It's going to take the, the red that's on the bulk line. Uh, on the, uh, on on the, the bulk line, yeah. Straight in. Straight in. Just like that. And there's one of them. You would have thought that you would have thought that he'll probably leave this leave this red on the rail now. And take that from take that from as the third shot I would have I would have thought. He takes it third or he takes it no he could take it now, it depends on how close he is. Tough clearance, even if Jack does come back to the table. I'm going for that now. And he's it's played in. it well. Pablo balls away first. Just needs to get the white away from the cushion. Straight as possible on this one to the left middle. All about queuing this. From what I've seen of Scott Ross, he's a very good curist. Oh, he's not taking it. He wants to make sure he's going to leave it to last. Probably a good decision. Because the black passes into either of the bottom. Pop 
Perfect. So for six four, can he hold himself together? It's a confident shot. Not quite far enough, but still back in to get this. Jack back at thirteen to eight. Scott Ross one to two. For the hill, it's there. Six four Scott Ross. No more chances. Another breaking dish. Do you feel a bit sorry for Jack? I've got to say, nothing has gone his way. Was it a bad shot into the middle? I, I don't know. But I wouldn't like to call because I didn't see exactly what happened. He, he hit it so hard and things happened so fast. But other than that, I can't think of a massive mistake he's made. It's just been run of the ball. And that's it. That's how cruel it can be. Well, that kind of sums the match up for Jack. And look at them reds. Or yellows. No, they're not perfect, but with a free shot, this should be the end. What would you be going for here, David? Reds or yellows? Um... I am not sure. I like reds. I like reds too. I, I like slightly reds easier to, take to work the red down the, table. the rail, yeah. It's just more of a more maneuverability. It's just the first one. Yeah, I knew he was gonna take yellows. I never when it's borderline I tend not to call it. He could still be taking reds here. Yeah, yeah. he is. And that you see the difference is Mr. Galveston Mr. Gustafsson I know, I know <laughs> just had to say it wrong once <laughs> it's the players that are more experienced at black ball when the opposition goes in off of the break they see the first shot so much more clearer than someone like well maybe me who's only been playing a couple of years it's all about making use of use of your free shot Obviously, yeah, and opening balls up and seeing things straight away. We see them. Chris Bowen springs to mind. Yeah, okay, so down the table. Playing the plant now. I don't see Scott missing here. Unless a, a little bit of table, table nerves kick him because he's on the stream table. But no, he's played that perfectly. No, he doesn't look nervous. He looks relaxed, if anything. Just nicely focused and relaxed. Too experienced to let nerves get in the way. thing can go wrong here and that is from the second to last word to the last word he's just thinking about whether to go up for the one in the middle now we'll leave it to last I think he's going to leave it to last is he no up we go that's what he didn't want you see now he's just slightly the wrong side and he snookered on the other one so he's just, he's just put a little bit of pressure on himself. Now he's going to have to play this um, with stun and left-hand side and run around with two cushions. Is he? Is he playing the other? No, then play stun, left-hand side, yeah. two cushions. Oh, oh wow. Well. There we go. Only call shots when you're sure. 
screw straight over the table there or you could just pop it in, play the black in the middle, big pocket there you go. a little bit slightly run out of harder position, than he wanted but I don't see him missing this there it is 7-4, well done Scott Ross a very scrappy sort of game had a little bit of everything in it, unlucky to Jack Whelan didn't do a lot wrong to be fair did you enjoy your commentary experience? yeah that's been great, thanks Thanks a lot David next up at 3pm on the stream well, a cracker of a match. Wales versus Scotland in a best of 13 encounter. Professional Simon Ward against professional Liam Dunster, Scotland's finest, in the last 64, I presume. The last 32, last 32. of the Open. So that's coming up at 3 pm. I should be belting. Coral have got uh, Liam Dunster as favourite. Mm, just because of consistency, maybe. Doesn't seem to lose ever. Right, Simon Ward off at your own peril. And we will see you at 3 pm. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't mean like beer. <laughs> Cigarette, then, shall we? Thank you. 
Thank you. 